You're listening to SOJC Radio, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and teaching the doctrine of Christ to the whole world. Good evening and welcome to Friday night SOJC Remnant Gathering. Grab your Bible and your pens and your paper and when two or three are gathered in his name, the Lord is right here with us. So thank you for joining us and here's Brother David. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the July 28th, 2023 edition of the FOJC Remnant Gathering. I am David Carrico, and it is my great honor to welcome each and every one of you to this week's episode of the FOJC Remnant Gathering. So very thankful to have each and every one of you on board. Our study for this evening will be entitled, Shaking the Foundations. And we're so thankful to be able to once again preach the word of the Lord have so much going on. I tell you what, it's hopping and popping here at Ground Zero at FOJC. Uh, I'm so thankful for everything that's going on and the fruit that the Lord is giving us. I have an announcement to make, several announcements actually. Uh, I'm very thankful that last night the new edition of Enduring Sound Doctrine, Sins Against the Holy Ghost, went up on uh, Tracy Benet's website. He walks with us everywhere, really pleased the way that turned out. Uh, Next week, we're going to be uh, doing a teaching entitled Lucifer Unmasked, so we're just so thankful the way the Lord is blessing that. Uh, Brett Graham and the Holy Commission Boot Camp, Lord just really blessing that broadcast. We're just so thankful for that. And I want to say also we have a an announcement to make for the 16th of August. We now have a date and a time for our New Moon Prayer Meeting. It's going to begin at 6 o'clock in the evening on Wednesday, August 16th. Our entire FOJC radio crew will be involved. Uh, Brett Graham and Brian Reese and Tracy Vinay and Donna. Donna's going to be praying for people with abuse issues. And we're going to be doing corporate binding and loosing. We'll be doing prayer for healing. We're going to be doing warfare prayer. We're going to be doing it all. Uh, John Pounders is going to be involved in it. Likewise, John Hall. And uh, we're going to come together in an awesome time of prayer. And uh, Jimmy Cooper also. And we're just... And how long is it going to last? Well, we're going to start about 6 o'clock. And... As long as there's people wanting to pray, we're going to pray, and we're going to seek God, and we're going to we're going to we're going to have us a prayer meeting up in here. Yes, we are, and uh, I'm just so excited about it. Uh, a lot of other things coming up. We're going to have a full blessed August coming up at FOJC Radio on the sixth uh, Sunday Night Live. Tracy Vinay and I. Uh, the Watchtowers of Atlantis on our YouTube format. On the 13th of August, uh, Atlantis in America on a Rumble channel. This is part two with Brian Reese and I. And on the 20th of August on Sunday Night Rumble, uh, broadcast on Star Forts. And uh, I'm just so thankful with the uh, good crew we have here and with all the material we're able to put out. And uh, just very, very thankful. A lot going on. It's popping here. And uh, we're so thankful. And I just want to say, too, I was so blessed. Tracy got back from out west. And the gifts that she brought back from our listeners out there, I read it just so touching. It just so touching. I, I, And I hate to start. I, I just thank people for their gifts and kindness because if I start mentioning stuff, I'll forget a bunch. So I don't do that. But I just want you all to know how touched we were to get those things it's such a blessing that you're praying and thinking of us just such a blessing for to know that we have friends um, all over and also we had some friends stop by from Australia uh, yesterday uh, dropped into the Puritan barn we had a marvelous time it's just such a marvelous thing that we have friends in Australia just have to drop by such a blessing and our prayers are with them as they they go, and um, I'm just blessed, Amen. And let's let's pray. We have needs to pray for here. 
uh, and Donna wants to say that she wants to apologize because some of our emails are going to we're going to spam and some of these are a little older and I tell you what the devil always does something I tell you what this electronic stuff will have you talking to yourself so some of these are a little older but we're going to put these on to acknowledge them and just because we don't pray for it here on the air we can't pray for them all but doesn't mean we don't pray because we put a real importance on prayer here we live on prayer and um we're just so thankful for that but dylan uh wants prayer he's struggling with his purpose uh eric needs a hernia healing uh sandy for marriage help uh beth for her son and her husband shania has health problems and financial needs cindy and her family and anna also is in need of prayer so we're going to take these needs before the lord tonight what donna yes and we want to pray for uh our friends uh from australia Okay, and also Annie at Shake and Wake. We want to pray for her. We appreciate her and our friends from Australia as they they travel home. And we want to pray for this message tonight. Every time the word of the Lord goes forth, it's important. We want to make the very most of every opportunity we have. I really feel an urgency, and I really feel that we're coming into a time of uh, a, a time of persecution, I believe, is not far down the road. I think it's right over the horizon, and we need to prepare ourselves physically and spiritually in every way. It's a serious time, it really is. It's a time, you know, there's the old sports expression, you leave it all on the court. Well, I think it's time for the Israel of God to leave it all on the court to make our our real push for souls, to do everything we can to put out the gospel and reach people with truth in these last days. Father, we thank you so much once again for the opportunity to come before you and lift up these requests to a holy and loving God. Father, we want to lift up Dylan to you tonight. He is struggling about his purpose. And Father, we know that only Jesus can give us purpose and direction in our life. We only find our true purpose when we find it in Jesus. We want to pray for Eric and this hernia. Father, in Jesus' name, they're able to do all things. And Father, we just pray that you just heal this in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to pray for Sandy, who needs marriage help. Father, we just pray that you just let your Holy Spirit get in, put it right in the middle of that situation and bring joy and healing to that marriage. Father, we want to pray for Beth her husband and her whole family we pray for fellowship and we we pray for blessing for them we pray for shania for health and financial needs father we just pray that you meet those needs we know that you will jehovah jireh provide for shania in jesus name father we want to pray for our our friends from australia as they travel home and um we just just ask the greatest blessings on our friends we want to pray for cindy and her family and uh father just pour your spirit upon them in jesus name and also for cindy cindy's grandson we want to pray for annie and uh that you'll just pray bless her father and also annie at shake and wake we just pray father in jesus name you bless her in all that she puts her hand to father in jesus name we pray for this message tonight that you'll open the hearts of the hearers to receive your word father we just pray that you just bring the israel of god together in a mighty supernatural unity and purpose in the mighty name of jesus we pray and we agree amen and amen something happened i gotta tell you yesterday when our friends from australia come they looked at our bulletin board back here and we have other friends and listeners from australia and they know them and they recognized them on the bulletin board 
Now, how cool is that, huh? That's cool. That's right. So listen, you worship the Lord for just a few moments, and we'll be back with our message for this evening, Shaking the Foundations. We're sorry, but because of copyright rules, you cannot hear my music. However, if you want to hear the message in its entirety with my music, you can join us on the radio page on Friday night for the live audio broadcast at 6 p.m. Central Time, or you can listen on our podcast page at FOJCRadio.com. Here's Brother David. Amen. Turn to the book of Amos, chapter 9, and verse 1. Shaking the foundations. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door that the pulse may shake and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. John Wesley said of this text, the altar of burnt offering before the temple at Jerusalem This altar and temple Israel had forsaken and set up others against it. And here God in his jealousy appears prepared to take vengeance. Our God is a jealous God. Our God will tolerate no other gods before him. And as Israel went astray and set up other altars... The prophet Amos saw a vision of what was going on in the spiritual realm. He saw the Lord by the altar in Jerusalem giving the order to strike, to strike, and to destroy, and to bring down that idolatrous house that had mixed the things of evil with the worship of God. And we cannot but miss the parallel with what is going on right now in the United States, and I know it's going on wherever you are, all around this good old flat earth. The worship of God has been compromised to an unbelievable degree to the things of paganism. The old standards have gone by the wayside, and there's a new cart carrying the ark of God into the religious scene. And we see the same In Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 2, we know that the word of the Lord says that judgment will begin at the house of God, and there will be a day, and I believe that day is soon coming, when the Lord is going to give the order in the heaven of heavens to say strike strike this apostate religious system and every one that runs it won't do you any good to run because you will be overcome you will be cut down and you will be destroyed in ezekiel 9 and 2 ezekiel prophesied at the time of the fall of jerusalem in 586 bc and the prophet said this And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, and a rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in, and they stood beside the brazen altar. Every one that did not sigh and groan. In verse 4, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. The Lord at this very moment is getting ready to strike. He is going to strike the foundations of this apostate church. All of those that do not sigh and cry and groan. And I tell you what, it's time to really sigh and cry and groan. It's time for us to get on our face before God and to cry out in sackcloth and ashes, if there be any that have an ear to hear, to run before this terrible, terrible, and I, well, it's not a terrible event. You know, judgment of God is a good thing. When the judgment of God falls, 
there might be a few more people wake up. In the great prophet Isaiah, he also takes us into the throne room of God. And here we see how the, how the house of God should be run in the earth and in the third heaven. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, 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 one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory and the post of the door were moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke that's the way the house of God should shake we should shake the foundations in the spiritual realm but I am afraid that the house is going to shake and it's going to shake because the altar's been forsaken that altar that was the the shadow and the type of the cross of Christ that was to come just as in Israel that altar was forsaken and the Lord said strike it in this modern day of apostasy the cross has been forsaken for an easy believism and a way that the Lord knows nothing of and it goes on here I just want to read a little more in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 6 in, in verse 5, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. That is the way that the altar in the third heaven should operate. The very coals from the altar of God should be upon our lips, and we should burn with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Our lips should have a fresh anointing of the fire of heaven that we can speak that word unto those that are in a lost and dying world. Now, we're going to look... In Amos the ninth chapter and we're going to deal with the prophecy that Amos gave in Amos chapter 9 he began the chapter by saying he saw a vision of the Lord yeah. amen we need some people that can see what's going on in the spiritual realm in Ezekiel the angels were there with their slaughter weapons. I tell you what, there are angels now with their slaughter weapons getting ready to cut loose on this apostate abomination. In Amos chapter 9, verse 11, there's a prophecy here we're going to pay a lot of attention to this evening because it's so important. In Amos chapter 9, verse 11, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old and this prophecy of the restoration of the tabernacle of David is going to be very important to our study this evening we got into that last week and we talked about how David put the Ark of the Covenant in a tabernacle and he instituted the Davidic worship around the Ark in the tent that he pitched for it at Jerusalem and we're going to look a lot deeper into that to get some of the just so much truth there now I want to read Matthew Henry's comment on Amos chapter 9 verse 11 the church militant Notice the phrase militant. The church militant. Are we militant this evening? Do we have just a little bit of a militant attitude? It's time. It's time to get militant. The church militant in its present state, dwelling as in a shepherd's tent to feed, as in soldier's tents to fight, 
is the tabernacle of David. I love the words of that old nonconformist Puritan, the church militant in its present state, dwelling as in shepherds' tents to feed, as in soldiers' tents to fight, is the tabernacle of David. And today, I'm not going to read, I could read um, quotes until we're tired of hearing from dispensationalist authors. And these authors, and we've done that in past broadcasts, this is one of the big points, one of the many points of departure between biblical truth and dispensationalism. What these people will argue is that the tabernacle of David will be restored during the millennial reign, that Jesus will sit upon the throne of David in the millennial reign in an earthly physical temple. I could read you the quotes from all of their leaders that teach this very, very sad delusion. But we're going to share with you the truth of the Word of God. And we're going to show you in such a way that's so clear and unmistakable that the fulfillment of the prophecy of this prophet Amos, of the tabernacle of David being restored, it's going to thrill our hearts. And it's going to encourage us and lift us up to continue on like a mighty army taking forth the banner of Christ. In Psalm chapter 61 and verse 4, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Salah. David understood the spiritual tabernacle. He understood the tabernacle of the Most High. The sweet psalmist of Israel had much to say. And we're going to be reading some more text. And he understood that when he instituted the Davidic worship in the tabernacle of David, that this was a reflection of the worship before the throne. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the institution of the worship of the priesthood of Melchizedek that does not depend upon man. This golden visionary candlestick that we saw in Isaiah, it does not need man to pour oil in to keep the fire burning. But the two angels before the throne of God, they pour the oil into this candlestick and it's creating a supernatural move of God. Now, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, we're going to read the Davidic Covenant. And there's two things mentioned here. The house and the throne. 2 Samuel chapter 7, we're going to read verse 12 and 13. And when thy days be fulfilled, this is speaking unto David, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Thy throne shall endure forever. And there's two things at view in this prophecy. We have the kingdom and the throne, and that throne, it was said, would be established forever. I want to read the comment that John Wesley had on this text, and it's so important. We really need to get this straight. Brother Wesley said this, This is meant literally of Solomon, who alone did build the material house of the temple, but ultimately of Christ, who is the builder of God's spiritual house or temple. Forever, this is not meant of Solomon, for his kingdom was not forever, but is to be understood of David's posterity in general and with special respect to Christ, in whose person the kingdom was to be lodged forever. And we have two things at view in this text we have the throne and the kingdom, and there was an earthly kingdom and the line of David, and from this line, the Messiah was to be born. But the throne of Solomon did not endure forever, but there is a throne in the third heaven 
It is called the throne of David. And upon this throne at this very minute, our Lord Jesus Christ sits as the fulfillment of this Davidic prophecy. We have the house, we have the kingdom, and we have the throne. And in 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And the house of David was his physical descendants. There was Solomon, and there were many more. And through those physical descendants, it was the line of the Messiah, which our Lord Jesus Christ would be born. But there is also a throne. There is also a throne that will be established forever. It is now in the third heaven, and we understand there's a kingdom and there's a throne. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 3, we see the natural line. It says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which made of the seed of David according to the flesh. The house of David was the physical line that brought forth Jesus Christ, and the promise unto David that there would be a throne and there would be someone always upon it just not now but forever and ever that was fulfilled in our Lord Jesus Christ now I've done it again I've done it again I have left a book in the front room I'm going to let Sister Donna cover because I got to go get a book I'm going to read you a little bit out of so Sister Donna you're on don't you just love live radio? Well, we are live, and so anything can happen here. <laughs> we just thank the Lord for making this available for us to be able to do this every week, and we're so blessed by all of you in the chat. I'm sorry sometimes I don't catch all your questions. Sometimes I don't know all the answers, and I have to look them up too, or ask Brother David, of course. I call him Mr. Baibu. He quotes so much better than I do. I cannot remember everything. I don't know. Maybe my mind just ain't made like his, but praise God that his is like that. So, thank you all for listening, and please do remember uh, to send us your questions. I actually made some new forums, but just recently, CompuServe, which is my old faithful CompuServe email, it changed and made me go to using the AOL version and it's very confusing right now and I'm I'm learning it but I keep having trouble finding things so David is back and I'll just wait for him if he's ready just holler when you're ready I'm ready sister Donna okay thank you so much my dear now here we go and I tell you what anyone's ever been in our house I have I do several lessons every week and I have a stack of books for every lesson. So I got books everywhere. But I got the one I want now and this is a good book. Uh it was written this was fellows from was from Australia. Kevin Connor uh was his name and it's called The Tabernacle of David. And there's a lot of good material out there and there's so much if you get back beyond this demonic stench of dispensationalism. I mean, ever since it came into play around 1830, it has spread like a leaven and like a poison. It is just absolutely out of the pit of hell. I tell you what. But let me read what Brother Connor had to say about that. And this is so spot on. Again, the New Testament writers speak of the fact that that Jesus Christ was to receive the throne of David, not a materialistic, nationalistic throne. It was a heavenly throne of rulership. Now, everybody now needs to say a big amen. This is the stone that is stumbled over by the dispensationalist. Matthew Henry got this right. John Wesley got it right, Charles Spurgeon got it right, but today hardly anyone gets it right because they have been brainwashed with the demonic spew of dispensationalism that turns the Word of God inside out. Now let me read this again. Brother Connor says, again, the New Testament writers speak of the fact 
that Jesus Christ was to receive the throne of David, not a materialistic, nationalistic throne. It was a heavenly throne of rulership. When David foresaw that God would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ and his exaltation to the Father's right hand. Christ is to sit in the Father's throne at God's right hand now and until all enemies become his footstool. The earthly throne of David pointed to the heavenly throne of the Son of David. Such pure and clear and solid truth, but yet this is turned inside out by those that want to make the throne of David a racial thing, a nationalistic thing, a carnal and a material and a worldly thing. And for people that do that, you're going to totally miss that. The devil wants to push you into a materialistic, worldly mindset to make you think there's some kind of a materialistic solution to the problem we're in. There is not one. The only solution we have to our problem is Jesus. But men and women, I've read the book. There will be a remnant of God that's going to march in the full anointing of Jesus Christ. But there's going to be the time. I think it's already decreed. I think that America is just like Israel of old when the prophet Hosea said, Ephraim is joined unto his idols. Leave him alone. I believe the angels at this very moment have the slaughter weapons in their hand and they're waiting for that order from the Lord Most High, strike, 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 and shake that foundation to its very core. And it's going to be the, the prophecy of Amos. It talks about people running. And it's just going to be like someone when you stir up a nest of cockroaches. They're going to run. But none of them are going to get away because they have polluted the altar of the Most High God. God is holy. He will not share his glory with idols, and he is going to shake the foundations. The angels have the slaughter weapons in their hand, and I say, Amen. Even so, strike. Let the judgment of God come. Let it fall. And let it fall soon. And I mean that with all my heart. It's time to cry out for judgment because the abominations are such... That the stench has become an unbearable. It's time for the Israel of God that sigh and groan to call out unto the Lord Most High to shake the foundations once again. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 and 6, there's a prophecy of the lineage of David. And we see here, we, we have that earthly lineage of David that is spoken of of his house and his earthly kingdom. And we have that spiritual lineage that will be fulfilled in Christ. Now let's look at Jeremiah 23, and let's look at verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David. You see, this is a part of the fulfillment of the Davidic com covenant, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And notice that that's capital B, capital R. A-N-C-H. It is one of the messianic titles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I will raise unto David a righteous branch, that's Jesus, and a king shall reign and prosper. He shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Jesus Christ is the righteous branch that will come through the house of David. And in the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 12, it tells us the great prophet Zechariah, and it's amazing. The Bible just never ceases to amaze me. You can read the prophecies of Amos, you can read Isaiah, you can read Zechariah. They all are in perfect harmony because they all have the same author, the Holy Ghost of Heaven. And in Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 12, the scripture says, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, 
and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Now, right here is a line of demarcation. There's no doubt that Jesus Christ is the branch, the righteous branch that was raised up from David. It prophesies that Jesus Christ, the branch, is going to build the temple. And we have to ask ourselves, what temple is it that Jesus is going to build? And Jesus talked about building the temple and raising it up. And the Pharisees of that day, they wanted to kill him. And when you tell the religious Pharisees of this day that there's a spiritual temple that's being raised up, that there is a spiritual kingdom that stands in opposition to the kingdom of this world, they will hate you. I guarantee you, I feel the hatred and the opposition from these people perpetually, but that's okay because they are on the wrong side of this thing. And I likened, um, I remember that old song, The Wabash Cannonball by Roy Acuff. I I won't sing it for you. It talks about listening to the rumble, the rattle, and the roar. And the Israel of God is like the old Wabash cannonball. It's going down the rails, and it's picking up speed, and you can see the sparks coming off the rails. That's the way the move of God is. It's picking up speed, and there's going to be sparks, because this thing will not be done without conflict. It will not be done like Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. We're the army of God. The tabernacle of David is like the tents of a soldiers, as Matthew Henry said. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it's time to come back to Jesus. It's time to come back to Jesus in each and every way. And in John chapter 2 and verse 19, Jesus talked about rebuilding the temple. And this is the only temple that the Lord has. This is the temple that the righteous branch, Jesus Christ, is building right now. In John chapter 2 and verse 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? You see the the total disconnect here? Jesus was talking about a spiritual temple. All that they could think about was a physical temple, a physical temp, a physical kingdom built around race that is repulsive to God. So Jesus set them straight. In verse tw- in verse twenty one, the apostle John writes, "But he spake of the temple of his body, the temple that Jesus spoke about raising up, was the temple of his body." the body of Christ, the Israel of God, you and I that have faith in the real Jesus, and you cannot take the words of the real Jesus, throw them out, and put a completely different interpretation on it, and claim to be, well, you can claim to be, but it does not make you a follower of the real Jesus. Worth the threshing floor, my friends. Worth the threshing floor and worth the point of separation. And he that hath an ear need to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. And the angel, the Spirit of God, is saying unto the church that the angels have the slaughter weapons in their hand. And it's time, it's time to come home to Jesus. In Colossians chapter 2, beginning in verse 9, we need to realize that there is a head of the church. His name is Jesus. He's sitting upon the throne of David right now in the third heaven. In Colossians chapter 2, beginning in verse 9, speaking of Christ, it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality, and power. Jesus is the head of the church, and he reigns supreme at the right hand of the Father on the throne of David. In verse 18, Paul gives the warning, let no man beguile you of your reward. 
in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, and not holding the head. People have to get a hold of the head the Lord Jesus Christ, and we need to believe each and every word that our head spoke to us. And when he said that he is raising up the temple of his body, we need to understand that this is the only temple that Jesus is ever going to build. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Praise his holy name. I want to read in the 15th chapter of the book of Vax. And I want to take us to the council of Jerusalem which dealt with the contention between the Jews and the Gentiles. And at the Council of Jerusalem, this prophecy of the book of Amos came into view. And it played a very important part in the understanding of the mission of the Israel of God and of bringing the Jews and the Gentiles together under one tent, the tabernacle of David in the Melchizedek priesthood. Let's read Acts chapter 15 and let's begin in the 14th verse. Simeon hath declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. Now let's grasp what's being said here. James is talking about the words of Simon Peter when he was talking about Cornelius and the Gentiles receiving the gospel. We we see that in Acts chapter 10. And he says that the bringing in of the Gentiles to the gospel is the fulfillment of this prophecy in, in Amos. Look at the text in verse 16. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down and I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called saith the Lord who doeth all these things so brother Henry was right the New Testament tells us that the fulfillment of the tabernacle and the throne of David it's not in the building of some earthly temple where everyone can get together. It is in the tabernacle of David that is being restored in the third heaven where Jew and Gentile and whatever we are and whatever color we are or how short or tall we are, we can all come together in the tabernacle of David that had fallen down. And after the Davidic worship was instituted by David, and we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit more about that. I tell you what, uh, if that doesn't uh, get you fired up, your wood's wet. I guarantee you, your wood's just wet. But after we know the story that David wanted to build the physical temple and the Lord, he said, you know, you're a man of war. You've shed too much blood. I'm going to leave that to your son. And we know the story of Solomon, mightily blessed of God. The Lord appeared to him in a vision. My goodness. And after all of that, Solomon turned unto idolatry. He married pagan wives. He built altars for his pagan wives right there on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. We know the the deep and the horrific apostasy. And this is why the scriptures speak, speak of the tabernacle of David that was fallen down. Solomon ushered in an apostasy in Israel where idolatry was mingled with the altar of God. And this is why there was there was the time when the prophet Amos had to stand up and said, uh, I see the Lord. <laughs> I see the Lord. And he's getting ready to strike. 
he's going to strike this this old house and it's going to shake the the foundations are going to shake and when the lord strikes when the lord brings down his hand and strikes this apostate mess and the angels with their slaughter weapons are released there's not going to be any place for him to run that's why we appeal now that's why we appeal with everything in us to come out from among them and be ye separate. It is folly and insanity to think that the precious things of God can be mingled with the things of paganism. In Psalm chapter 43 and verse 3, David had such an understanding of that spiritual temple. He said, O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. We talked quite a bit last week about the presence of God and how the, the Lord is going to build the Israel of God around his presence. Amen. And the true saints of God, we know where that temple is. We know that the temple and the throne is there in the third heaven that the tabernacle of David has been set up in the third heaven and God's saints have always known that oh Jonah boy he was uh we can relate to Jonah can't we Jonah uh he had a way of stepping in it didn't he but Jonah when he was in the belly of the whale in Jonah chapter 2 and verse 4 well verse 3 says for thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas and the floods compassed me about and thy billows and thy waves passed over me Jonah did not know up from down he was swirling into the depths in pitch black darkness but in verse 4 then I said I am cast out of thy sight yet will I look again toward thy holy temple hallelujah and that's what we can do when we're swirling and we're, when we're out of balance and when we don't know which end is up, we know that we can look under the temple of the Lord in the third heaven where the tabernacle of David is open 24 hours a day. Well, with that, we're going to take a break. And boy, we got a whole lot more to share with you today on the FOJC Remnant Gathering. So we're going to take a break and we're going to be right back in just a few moments. FOJC Radio wants to introduce to our Remnant family the Holy Commission Boot Camp brought to you by Brother Brett Graham. These teachings are the basics or training for brothers and sisters in Christ's service. The Holy Commission is found in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Brett shares how we should walk with the Lord in order to accomplish the Holy Commission and also some tips about soul winning. If you have questions about this series, please send them to lastdayschurch at cs.com and put capitals H C B C in the subject line. You can find playlists for the Holy Commission Boot Camp on our Rumble and our YouTube channels. And thank you, as always, for your prayers and support. FOJC Radio Remnant family. Sister Donna here. I just want to thank all of you for your support and your love and kindness. Just wanted to let you know that here at FOJC Radio, we want to reach the world for Jesus. I know you know this verse. You've said it as a child probably many times. But as a reminder, in John 3, 
verse 16, 17, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In order to do this, we have chosen to use many different avenues. We have our regular Friday night message with Brother David, and then we have our Sunday night live, and we have different people on it. And then we have other Sunday night live programs with David and Tracy. Sometimes we're on Rumble, and sometimes we're on YouTube. You just never know who we might have on there. But I just wanted to remind you all and thank you for your support and give us a listen on Sunday Night Live. These programs usually start at 8 p.m. Central Time. You never know what we might be doing. We're full of all kinds of surprises. We want to reach the world for Jesus. This is Tracy Vinay from He Walks With Us Everywhere over on YouTube. Knowing the doctrine of Christ is the most important thing in your life, whether you know it or not, as David Carrico says. We are excited to bring you the sound doctrine we need to endure these last days. Our newest original series, Enduring Sound Doctrine, is now airing on my YouTube channel. In Matthew 24, 13, Jesus says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I like to say it's not a hop, skip, and jump to the end. It's an enduring. We welcome you to come over to He Walks With Us, one word, everywhere, and subscribe, like, and share. And please remember to subscribe, like, and share FOJC Radio's YouTube channel, Underground, one word, church. Thank you for listening to the content that we're presenting and, of course, for your support and your love and your prayers. We hope to see you over there. Now back to tonight's message with Brother David Carrico on FOJC Radio. Welcome back to the FOJC Remnant Gathering. And as I always do after the break, I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you that prays for us and that studies with us and that supports us with your gifts and with your kindness. Thank you so much. We appreciate it from the bottom of our heart. We couldn't do what we do without you. Um, of all my announcing, I forgot to announce what was this Sunday night on FOJC Sunday Night Live. And this Sunday night on our FOJC Rumble channel, the uh, broadcast is entitled Satanic Panic. And uh, myself, John Pounders, Dan Badandi, and Brian Reese are will be a part of that broadcast. That was a show that we did a while back with on Dan Badandi's Truth Radio, and it I was very pleased with the way it turned out. So we're going to play that for all of our uh, Sunday Night Lab listeners. I believe you'll be greatly blessed by it. And tomorrow night on the Midnight Ride of Fizzy Pop, it's going to be entitled Oppenheimer's Nightmare, Blowing the Whistle on E.T., and we're going to be all up in that um, uh, UFO little ta-ta they had there in the house. So, boy, just so much to talk about there that is so important. So we're going to be all about that tomorrow on the Midnight Ride. So thank all of you so much for supporting all that we do. Let's get back to the Word of the Lord. We're going to go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, we're going to begin at verse 29. And... The contention of dispensationalism is that Jesus is not sitting upon the throne of David. <laughs> they say that he'll sit upon the throne of David in the millennial reign, but not now. They say that this will be a racial, earthly kingdom where the Gentiles will be servants unto the Jews in their fairy tale of the millennial reign. And we're going to read the word of the Lord 
and we're going to see if what they say is so or not. Like I say, I've done, I've exposed this so many times, and I've got, I have a better library of all the dispensational writers than most dispensationalists do. I cut my teeth on this way back in the early 70s, and I was actually, oh, I, it almost pains me to say it, but I was actually a dispensationalist Bible teacher. And I, I taught it with my Bible charts way back in the 70s. And uh, I know it better than most of them today know it, and I still have my books. And the difference between them and me, when the Lord spoke to me, I listened. And when the Lord corrected me, I repented. And when the Lord spoke to me and said, from now on, you tell them what I said, I said, yes, Lord, I'll say what you say. And uh, I'll gladly bear the disdain of those that will not do so. But let's go to the book of Acts. And everyone, uh, we have ears to hear and we have minds to see. And uh, the Bible doesn't say five different things. It says one thing. And one thing it specifically says is that when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, that he sat upon the throne of David. Let's read it. This is the very first sermon that was ever preached on the day of Pentecost. Let's read the words of the apostle in second chapter of Acts, beginning in verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ. There it is. In words so clear and words so plain, where will be the end of those that deny the clear teaching of Scripture and try to turn the precious truths of God into some kind of a racial abomination? The Lord is getting ready to strike the doorpost. He is going to shake the foundations. Each and every professed believer, they have a choice to make. And they're going to have to make it right now. You're either going to be with the Lord or you're going to be with those that make up something contrary. In Isaiah chapter 16, the great prophet spoke in the fifth verse of the 16th chapter. And in mercy shall the throne be established and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hastening righteousness. Hallelujah. And that is fulfilled this very moment. Jesus is sitting upon the throne in the tabernacle of David at the right hand of the Father. The tabernacle of David has been lifted up. Praise God. I want to read a comment from another author that I enjoy reading. I've got probably about eight books by Philip Morrow in my library. He was one of the early critics of dispensationalism and brother Morrow had this to say he has a very good book called the hope of Israel and on page 224 he says this thus the tabernacle of David is evidently replete with typical meaning concerning which it will suffice for our present purpose to remark that to David the man after God's own heart who was himself a conspiracy type of Christ and who is more closely associated with the gospel than any other of the patriarchs it was given to him to know the mind of God concerning real spiritual worship and that he being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne and he quotes Acts 2 and 30 was permitted to give in the tabernacle pitched by him on Mount Zion a wonderful foreshadowing of that worship by prayer, preaching, and song which characterizes the gatherings of God's people 
in this gospel dispensation. What a sad state of affairs it is for people. It reminds me of the prophecy that they will steal God's words from the people. These false teachers are stealing the spiritual blessings of Christ by pe- from people by trying to bury them underneath layer after layer of their false doctrines and lies. Kevin Connor. I want to read something else from his book on the Tabernacle of David. On page 59, he said this, and oh, this is so good. He said, or in other words, the coming of the Gentiles would be into the booth or house and kingdom of David's son, Messiah Jesus. Hence, it was not to be fulfilled in a coming millennial kingdom, but in this present messianic dispensation, Jew and Gentile would be one in this tent, the church, the Israel of God. Hallelujah. We are come together as one new man, as Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians. And the wall of perdition has broke down between Jew and Gentile. And that means that that racial distinction is gone. You don't have to worry uh, to be a part of the one new man in the Israel of God. You don't have to wear a yarmulke and say Jewish words, praise God. But it's Jesus Christ that broke down that wall of petition. And it's Jesus Christ that makes us one. Jew and Gentile come together in the third heaven under the tabernacle of David in the Melchizedek priesthood. We have a spiritual kingdom. And if you are not in that spiritual kingdom of Christ, you are not in the spiritual kingdom of God. If you say that Jesus did not come and bring the kingdom with him, you missed it. You missed it. Because there's only one kingdom. It's the one Jesus talked about in Luke 17 and 21. Neither shall they say, Lo, here or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is with in you. There's not two kingdoms. There's only one. There's only one kingdom of God, and it reigns now within the hearts of those that confess Christ as Lord and enter into the kingdom of God and worship in the most heavenly places in the tabernacle of David. If you don't have that kingdom, you missed it. You missed it because this is the only kingdom of God that there is. In John chapter 18 and verse 36, John chapter 18 and verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. We need to send that out as an email to these good folks so that maybe they can get a clue. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. In the sixth chapter of John, they came by force. To take Jesus and make him a king, he run and hid from them. If Jesus came to set up an earthly kingdom, he sure missed a good chance there in the fifty in the in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. But of course, just like the Jews, when Jesus was teaching them in John chapter two about raising up the temple, the temple of his body, all they could think. Physical temple, physical temple, physical kingdom, physical kingdom. And all those people are looking forward to now is that physical kingdom that didn't come, they're looking for it to come later. And they call it the millennial reign. And it's not the kingdom that Jesus come to bring. And if you're not in the kingdom that Jesus come to bring, you're not in the kingdom because there's not two of them. In Kevin Connor, I'll read something else here, just real good. I'm going to read on, uh, this is from page 59, and Brother Connor said this. Allusion may also be seen in Amos to the tabernacle of David as to the Davidic order of worship that had fallen down and experienced breaches over the years because of ungodly kings in the line of David. This is seen in references to Zion, and David in Amos, and we'll read a couple of those for you. 
And this just shows us the historical apostasy that the great prophet Amos addressed. He addressed this prophecy, and then he spoke of the vision the Lord gave him of the Lord Most High striking the doorpost and shaking those foundations, just like he showed the prophet Ezekiel, the angels with the slaughter weapons in their hand. In Amos chapter 1 and verse 2, And he said, The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. The Lord is going to roar. He's going to roar, and he's going to raise his hand, and he is going to strike the doorpost, and the foundations are going to shake. In Amos chapter 6 and verse 1, Woe to them that are an ease in Zion. Full stop. <laughs> Woe to them that are an ease in Zion. Woe unto you. It says in, um, in Ezekiel that the Lord set a mark upon those that sighed and groaned for the abominations. Woe unto you that are at ease in Zion. Woe unto you that have no anointing and unction to pray and intercede. Woe unto you. Because the Lord is getting ready to strike the doorpost once again, and the house is going to shake. Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion, and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. And in the fifth verse, the prophet says, To the chant of the sound of the vial, and invent to themselves instruments of music like David. And Amos here mentions the Davidic worship, and he mentions the musical instruments that David used. And you see, you can have the best musical instruments in the world. You can have the everything of everything. But if you are polluting the altar of God it is not going to avail you anything let's let's go to first chronicles chapter 16 and let's look at the davidic worship we talked about this some last week and it's so important we really need to understand the the tremendous power of this prophecy in Amos 9:11 and its fulfillment for us right now, um, in First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 1, so they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it, and offered burnt sacrifices and peat offerings before God, and at this time, the tent of Moses was at one place. And the Ark of God had been captured by the Philistines. We talked about that a lot in our study last week. And at this time, when the Ark of God came back into the hands of the Israelites, David pitched a tent and put the Ark of God in the tent. This was the tabernacle of David. In verse 4, And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the Ark of the Lord, and to record and to thank and praise the God of Israel, Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, Jael, Shemaroth, and Jehiel, and Mattai, and Eliab, and Benaiah, and Obed-Edom, and Jeel with psalteries and harps. But Asaph made a sound with cymbals. Amen. Benaiah also, and Jehaziah the priest, with trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. Now try to just picture this for a moment. Here we have the tent that David pitched on Mount Sion and the ark of the covenant is brought into it and here the Davidic worshipers worship God continually. It didn't say they had them a little hour-long ta-ta but what it looks like here is being described uh, when one bunch worshipped the Lord till they was all wore out, there was another bunch come in. They worshipped the Lord continually before the ark. Could you imagine being able to actually stand in front of the ark of the covenant and worship? 
And it is even more precious to think about actually being able to stand upon before the one that that ark represented, the Lord Jesus Christ and his very presence. What a precious thing it is for us to be able to worship and for us to be able to pray and to come into the presence of God. In verse 8 to 11 in First Chronicles 16, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually, continually before the ark. The Davidic worshippers sought his face, and we are to seek him continually, and I know uh, we can't pray every minute of the day, but there should never be a day when we don't pray and seek his face. And to understand that it's such a privilege to be able to come before him continually. Now, in verse 37 here of 1 Chronicles 16, the text says, So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren, to minister before the ark continually as every day's work required. And in verse 39 and 40, it says, And to Zadok the priest and his brethren the priest before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon. So you see, Zadok and the priesthood was at Gibeon. That's where the tent of Moses and the altar was but the ark of God was in the tabernacle of David at Jerusalem so there was no burnt offerings offered before in the tabernacle of David and it was a spiritual worship that was instituted there Uh, in verse 40 it speaks of Zadok and the tabernacle at Gibeon to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar that burnt offerings continually morning and evening and to do according to all that's written in the law. Now, at this time, real spiritual worship, and of course, this was all ordained of God. This was all of him. Nothing took him by surprise. And this was a learning lesson for the Israel of God. And this is a lesson that we need to learn right now to understand that our worship is not tied to any earthly building. Our worship is not tied to any earthly organization or any earthly man. But our worship is in the tabernacle of David. In Psalm chapter 141 and verse 2, Let my prayer be set before thee as incense, and let the lifting up of my hands as the evening offering. There were no offerings of animals in the tabernacle of David, but yet the psalmist wrote, Let my prayer be set before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The lifting up of the hands in surrender unto the Lord in worship was the evening sacrifice. And this prefigured the the not only the fulfillment of the sacrifice of Christ, but guess what the sacrifice is now? Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You see, there's now no more animal sacrifice in the tabernacle of David, but that doesn't mean there's sacrifice. As the psalmist wrote, let the lifting up of my hands be as the evening sacrifice, and we are to, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. I want to read one final prophecy from the great prophet Amos in the ninth chapter. And I want to go down uh, Amos 9.11. 
has been a lot of our focus on the restoration of the tabernacle of David. And I want to just jump down a couple texts. And I want to read uh, verse 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. I'm going to read Matthew Henry's comment on this text. And what a prophecy. What a prophecy. This Amos 9-11 and 9-13, when this comes alive and explodes in our heart, Praise God. Praise God. The power of the Word of God is just absolutely phenomenal. And Matthew Henry's comment on Amos 9 and 13 about the plowman overtaking the reaper, he said this, The plowman shall overtake the reaper. That is, there shall be such a plentiful harvest every year and so much corn to be gathered in that it shall last all summer, even till autumn, when it is time to begin to plow again. This must certainly be understood of the abundance of spiritual blessings and heavenly things, which all those are and shall be blessed with who are in sincerity added to Christ and his church. The plowman shall overtake the reaper and this speaks of harvest and this is prophetic it's a last day's prophecy that is connected you know it's just two verses down from the prophecy of restoring the tabernacle of David and for all those that will realize and you know I don't believe uh, that there's going to be a revival that is going to come and turn America back to righteousness I don't believe that's going to happen because I think America's gone too far. I think the angels are waiting there with their slaughter weapons and uh, they're waiting for that order to strike and to shake that house one again, once again. But what I do believe, that that prophecy's real. And there's a harvest that is beginning to take place right now. And I'm thankful we're just a little part of that, that the harvest of souls is beginning to come in and the Spirit of God is beginning to move. And as the Israel of God, as we turn our eyes away from the things of this world and when we enter into that tabernacle of David that has been restored, that worship and communion with the Most High God is going to fill us with His Spirit. But let us march in full anointing, just like Brother Henry said, the tabernacle of David, it's like the tent of a shepherd to protect us, and it's like the tent of a soldier to take us into war. There's going to be a harvest. There's going to be a harvest, and there's going to be a great revival among the Israel of God. The glory of God is going to shine upon us, just like the great prophet spoke in the 60th chapter of Isaiah. And there are going to be people, and many of them, that are coming to the Lord. And now is our time. Now is our time. In between the time when the the angels, and I believe their hands are raised, ready for the, for the order to strike. In between that time and the time it strikes, this is our time to lift high the banner of Jesus and to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ, to tell people there is an answer for this confusion. There is an answer for each and every problem that you have, and it is Jesus Christ and him crucified. I want to close with the words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. What a scripture. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. The blessings of God are there for us in the tabernacle of David. Praise God. And it is just it is just our prayer this evening 
that and I want to pray the prayer of the Apostle Paul here and I let's just jump down from Ephesians 1 3 and let's just go to verse 17 here that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and let's just make that our prayer that the eyes of the Israel of God be opened and that we really get it the abundant spiritual blessings that are there for us in the tabernacle of David hallelujah and I think with that we're going to close and uh, once again it's just as always God bless all of you and God bless all you chat people you're looking good this evening chat people we love you uh, and it's such a blessing to know we've got people in the chat each week that are praying for us and pulling together I tell you what it, it is just such a blessing we appreciate it more than you know so let's just close out with prayer to the Lord Father we do thank you once again for the opportunity to come before you and preach your word and lift up your son Jesus we just pray right now Father anyone that doesn't know your son Jesus to repent and believe the gospel and come home to him Father, we just pray that the eyes of the understanding of all of the Israel of God, that it be open, that we see the marvelous spiritual blessings that you have for us right now in the tabernacle of David, and of your goodwill and pleasure to pour out those blessings upon your people. Father, we just love you so much, and we know that uh, our humble efforts could accomplish nothing without your anointing and your spirit, and without you opening the heart that men and women may comprehend and understand so father we're going to truly give you the praise for everything good that happens in the mighty name of jesus we pray and we agree amen and amen god bless you all and we will see you next friday night 6 p.m central on the fojc remnant gathering <laughs> Thank you for listening and joining in fellowship with us here at FOJC Radio Remnant Gathering. You can contact us at FOJC Post Office Box 671 Tell City, Indiana 47586 or you can email us at lastdayschurch at cs.com or you may call us at 812 812- 836-2288. You can check out our website at www.fojcradio.com. Thanks and God bless.